I'm willing to bet that you're just like me. Someone who hasn't lived the best life they thought they should have. Made plenty of mistakes you believe you couldn't mend. Have occasionally hurt some people. Especially those close to you. But even when we err, redemption is possible, right? Make the call! Do it already! For redemption to be a possibility, there must be two things. A mistake, and the ability to make amendments for that mistake. We begin the story of infinite wealth with Ichiban Kasuga making good on his father's wishes by working at a job agency to give work to former Yakuza. In the previous game, there was a great disillusionment, where the Tojo clan disbanded. When you think of a Yakuza, you think of a cold-hearted criminal. Ichiban being a former Yakuza himself, empathizes with this plight. He takes special care in giving these ex-Yakuza members a second chance. But tragedy strikes when a VTuber, Tatara Channel, gets him to lose his job by revealing his Yakuza pet. Hey, hold up! That ain't right! With this, many ex-Yakuza members are left without purpose, without a job to earn ends meet. A fitting end for the hero of Yokohama. I doubt Masumi Arakawa would approve. During this time, Kiryu has gone into hiding with a new identity due to his legend being so grand, it creates shockwaves into harming the lives of those near and dear to him. Many of these ex Tojo clan members can't prosper from this huge turn of events. Masataka Ebina tells Kasuka that they have come to him to join the Seiryu clan in hopes of finding work, claiming that's what his father, Masumi Arakawa, would have wanted for them. Not only is he giving them work, but a chance at redeeming the Yakuza by disbanding the remaining ones with the second great disillusionment, and having this new waste disposal job be their new line of work by cleaning up the mess in Japan. If I may, could I ask you see this through? That no man gets left behind? Yes, of course. I'll see that it's done. Early on, our lovable dweeb is sent to Hawaii by Joe Sawashiro to find his long lost mother who he's never met to honor his late father by giving her his ashes. As the plane lands, we get to see Kasuga's action shine. He sees a wheelchair bound Eiji Mitamura having trouble getting off the plane and decides to lend him a hand. Uh, who what now? Uh, uh, Ahuiho. It's like saying, until next time. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ahuiho! When he sets foot on this tropical paradise, he searches for a cab driver that understands Japanese to help him find his mom's address. Here, we're introduced to the charismatic Eric Tomizawa. You just come in from Japan? I got you. Now, uh, hop in. But charisma can be deceiving. The friendly Tomizawa is actually working for a ruthless man named Yamai. Your face looks awful familiar. But our lovable idiot doesn't buy it. Maybe it's his good heart and naivete, but Kasuka can spot a good person with ease. He's able to see through Tomizawa's hesitation with using a gun, showing his true character. That Tomi-chan isn't threatening him out of malice, but because he himself is cornered into doing so. Is Yamai worth it? I can't just... Look, I don't have a choice here, man! Tomi is persuaded by Kasuga's words and puts his life on the line by going against Yamai's order. Holy shit! Holy shit! I was shot up! We learn that Tomizawa was framed for a crime he didn't commit, causing him to be jailed. At the time, his girlfriend, Marie, was pregnant. During his prison sentence, Marie chose not to visit Tomizawa except for one defining incident. Marie told Tomizawa she had miscarried. The stress of the situation had gotten to her. They had no longer seen one another since then. I also wasn't rich, but I, I was happy. I had a woman to love, and man, did she love me. Marie had moved from Hawaii due to the trauma it has caused her. 
It broke Tomizawa's heart. It drove him mad. He bought a gun in hopes to shoot the perpetrator, Dwight Mendez. Ready to bleed! Leader of the Barracudas. When push came to shove, Tomizawa couldn't go through with it. He was unable to pull the trigger. With the debt he incurred from buying the gun, Tomizawa fell into Yamai's gang, hoping to salvage his life in some way. But Tomizawa deserves better than just being able to clean up the scraps from his life. He deserves redemption. With the help of his new friends, Tomizawa is able to strike fear into the cold eyes of Dwight. Son, how are you still hanging? With that loaded scene to introduce Chitose, how could Kasuga put his good sense behind to trust such a snake? Well, that's an easy one. She claims the reason she had to manipulate Kasuga is because she had unfinished business about her house maid work for Kasuga's mother, Akane. She snoops around and finds information that Akane is being hunted down by the Barracudas. But not wanting to get into trouble, she ran away into the underbelly that is District 5 with the hopes of going into hiding so she doesn't ruin her family name, the prestigious Fujinomiya family. With a simple heart swayed, Kasuga lets her join his party. After spending some time to see Kasuga's character, Chitose decides against manipulating her new allies into the trap they planned for them. I want what you have. To live free. Shortly after helping the lads take down her former boss, we're introduced to Akane's religion, Halakana, whose main purpose is helping Kawaii prosper through charitable deeds to serve the goddess Nele. Halakana is primarily run by the sage, Bryce Fairchild. Never have I witnessed such pure, unwavering faith in all my years. They inform Kasuga of what little they know of Akane right before her disappearance, which brings them back to square one of having no leads. During this whole conversation, Chitose bounces and is on the phone with a mysterious caller. Actually, it turned out alright. If anything, that helped me earn their trust even more, so... I get that. Look, I gotta go. Despite this little charade of suspicions, Chitose comes up with a plan to pull a role reversal. What if, instead of them looking for Akane-chan, they got Akane to look for them? Kasuga and his team make a video go viral to attract the attention of everyone on the internet. Separated from my mother at birth, I am now on a quest to find her! And so I've traveled land and sea, only to find myself right here in Honolulu City! Mom, if you're out there, I just want to say I love you, And to everyone else, aloha! <laughs> This little stunt grabs the attention of Eiji, convincing him to help his kind new friends track down any lead that they can to find Akane-chan. This leads him to Wong To and learning about the Overseer. You son. What the hell are you doing? The figure that controls the Hawaiian underworld. Who is this Overseer that is after Akane? None other than our Palakana sage, Bryce Fairchild. Kasuga learns that his mother ran away with a child named Lonnie, and for some reason, this little girl could ruin everything Bryce has built up for him. The lads confront Bryce and learn that he's been recruiting children, erasing their identities by turning them into undercover agents, Haku, where they can infiltrate gangs, cops, and politicians so that he can have his meddling hands where he sees fit. Heretics be gone! Not only that, but we learn from a conversation with Ebina, Sawashiro, and Kiryu that their waste disposal business is partnered with Palakana. With footage from that talk, the VTuber reveals Kiryu's secret identity and the target on his back re-emerges. This gets them to affirm Tatara channel and the Seiryu are working together somehow, alongside his identity no longer being safe. A side effect of shame that Kiryu's been carrying is being harder to keep hidden. His misdeeds as a former Yakuza begins to cloud his psyche. Soon, Kasuga finds a woman who reveals his mother's location, 
She's been on a boat with Lonnie, showing why no one's been able to find him. The reunion is brief as he is betrayed by A.G., but not before she toasts that herself opens up about being a double agent for him, hoping her guilt wouldn't get the better of her. For her redemption, she decides to try and take A.G. down by herself, but he's able to escape. After the scramble, Chitose reveals she's behind the Tatara channel and the leaking of the information. Her VTube channel was her alter ego for her to get the approval her family never gave her. She fills us in that Eiji used to be a reporter before having his livelihood ruined by the Yakuza. Wanting revenge, Eiji helped the Tatara channel by going after injustice until he used his new influence to go after ex-Yakuza and ruin their lives. Eiji would blackmail her with her true identity so he could continue to pursue this personal vendetta of his. What'd you do that for? Alongside this revelation, we learned that the Japanese elites want nuclear power and have been sending nuclear waste with massive profits to Bryce on an island while Abina sends Yakuza labor so they all gain influence and wealth. When confronting Bryce, Chitose has another chance at redemption. She uses her influence by revealing her face, coming out with the truth of Tatara Channel and revealing the secret behind the nuclear waste with Palakana and the Seiryu clan. Tatara Channel is a lie. I... Chitose Fujinomiya knowingly spread false information to the public. Information about otherwise innocent people. Kasuka does good by his father by catching up with Akane-san and giving her Arakawa's ashes. And it's hard to talk about Kasuka's whole redemption arc, but to do so, I need to dial it back a bit. I can tell you went all out for today, Ichiban. Oh, you mean... <laughs> The guys help me pick this out. <laughs> is... is it weird? Alright, alright. No matter how pure of heart you are, that doesn't mean someone owes you their heart in return. Somewhere off screen between Like a Dragon 7 and Infinite Wealth, Kasuka developed feelings for Sachan. Seriously, in the previous game, the relationship was purely platonic with no hints of romantic tension. Yet... Will you marry me? My man, no words could capture my disappointment in Kasuka right now. Even this NPC can tell Kasuka fumbled. There's a smoking area a little ways up ahead. See? Oh, 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 oh right! Duh! Thank the goddess Nele that Kasuga's skill issue isn't contagious. His pet crawfish on the other hand, Nancy? Nancy do be getting bit. You know what's even crazier than crawfish romance? Kasuga isn't the only simp in this building. Even the frightful Yamai isn't safe from being down bad. She could tell at a glance I was crazy about her. Yamai! Wait, what was that? This video is about redemption. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Let's get back to it. Even for someone who's painted as cold and heartless as Yamai, his heart is in the right place. He takes care of Kiryu when he's down and provided a safe place for Kasuga's mom and Lani. Anything for you. He was part of a matriarch with Yui Tabata. His loyalty to her was taken advantage of. She framed Yamai while killing her lover, so her secret affair wouldn't spread through the grapevines. Even with her betrayal, our softy Yamai here still has an enormous capacity for forgiveness and love looming over him. He's not actually cold. On the contrary, it's actually quite warm. I was too warm anyway. Well, I think he's slick. <sighs> yeah. Listen, although I too am maidenless at the moment, at least I'm no simp. 
But even if you have no riz like the rest of us, there's no reason to be ashamed. <laughs> Don't freak out, alright? <laughs> Ta da! So, what do you think? I figured just saying it wouldn't cut it. I really wanted to put it out there. Hey, guess what? I even got one for you, too. <laughs> we can wear them together. Show them off all over Yokohama. I mean, what better way to start our journey? Huh? S s s go son On a serious note, Kasuka doesn't have a redemption arc of his own per se. He already believes in himself enough to feel worthy. But what he does add to the mixture of characters in this story is that he's the one making space for the other characters' redemption arcs. Tomizawa was given his chance to make his amends due in part to Kasuga seeing the good in him. Kasuga encouraged Tomizawa to do better than just being some con artist taxi chump. Chitose has her distressful frame of mind being challenged by Kasuga's openness to trust the strangers around him, showing her that she too can drop her guard and trust the people around her, and that doing so, they will support her. And most importantly, we have to talk about Kasuga's relationship with Eichen, or Eiji. Yeah, take care. Ahuiho! <laughs> yeah. Ahuiho, Kasuga-san. Eiji was never truly wheelchair-bound. He simply drugged himself to immobilize his legs to gain Kasuga's empathy. Eiji played through his emotions as Kasuga had cared for the disabled Dio Aoki in the previous game. Despite his deceit, when Tomizawa was trying to blackmail Kasuga, Eiji was there to support him. When Kasuga had no clue on how to read the low resolution photo of his mom's address, Eiji said, Computer, enhance. Eiji has sunk so low as to blackmail Chitose, mistreat the Yakuza in bitterment, put Kasuga's mother and Lani in danger, and yet. Hey, John! <sighs> Oh, hui ho, pal! Oh, hui ho! His small acts of brotherhood showed Kasuka that his soul can still be saved, that redemption is still possible for A Chan yet. Kira, your son, you gotta live. You live every last second you can. When you go, you go out strong. I won't let you otherwise. Kiryu carries the burden of being a former Yakuza, feel he's far past the point of redemption. Even when he tried to do the right thing, everyone he loves keeps getting in the crossfire. He didn't mean to hurt any of them, he just wanted to do right by them, and yet, disaster struck nonetheless. My death's finally worth a damn. I've screwed up more lives than I can count at this point. Not to mention... I'm a Yakuza. I haven't exactly lived a life that I can be proud of. Yamai was part of the Tojo clan once too. He idolized Kiryu's legend as the dragon of Dojima. But Yamai continues his simping ways by allowing Kiryu to redeem himself. Kiryu may not see himself as someone worthy enough of redemption yet, but Yamai sees differently. We get a glimpse of Yamai's capacity for empathy by the way he gets doctors to help out Kiryu as he's bedridden. Even, you know, if he was part of the reason he was injured. There was once a time when I actually looked up to you. What a waste. To Yamai, Kiryu's legendary dragon status isn't over yet. Kiryu still has a chance to live up to his name as the Dragon of Dojima. Kiryu-san pulled through, and for that, you have my thanks. With some semblance of hope for redemption, Kiryu starts on his bucket list. Not only doing the things he wishes he could have done to enjoy his life, but making sure he makes the right amendments by the people near and dear to him. Or I'll pay you back for Taichi ten times over. <sighs> uncle. Is it really you, Uncle Koss? Sawashiro too wants the second great disillusionment to happen properly. So he asks Kiryu to confront his old legendary Yakuza friends for help in confronting Ebina's corruption. You keep on pushing through. 
long as you're breathing, keep moving, keep trying, and figure it out. With being reacquainted with his old friends, Kiryu is met with disappointment. The legendary Yakuza's of his past are just wasting away in some dinky corner of the earth. Listless. Lifeless. What is this pity party his proud friends are sulking in? With cancer forcing Kiryu to face his mortality head on, he has to sit with the reality of his feelings of regret, seeing his ex-legends squander their last chance to truly make a difference disgust him. The hell's that supposed to mean? It's just as I said. I was stupid to think coming up here would change anything. Go ahead and run. Just remember that for all your excuses, you still have a job to do. You still have a chance at doing better in the long run, and they're just going to let it go to waste? Even with his cancer, that won't stop him from fighting for a better life. Kiryu is haunted by his lack of reform when he was the fourth chairman of the Tojo clan. He sees his sins take the shape of Ebina. All the wrongdoings, were they all for naught if the cycle of corruption continues? He can be seen as someone who can atone for that Yakuza lifestyle that he never got to fix. But when I was chairman of the Tojo, I had a chance. I could have changed the Yakuza for the better. I should have. But I didn't know such thing. But there's bad blood for Ebina and the Yakuza. Ebina is also a child of Masumi Arakawa. His mother's love for Arakara was taken advantage of, giving him eternal spite for the Yakuza. For him, the Yakuza's redemption is to be poisoned against their crimes. Sending them to work on the nuclear waste would be their death sentence. Kiryu shoulders Ebina's descent into resentment. Believing if he'd only done better as the fourth chairman, Ebina would have never fallen into such bitterness. But for Kiryu, Ebina's malice can be cleansed. Ebina can redeem the Yakuza to being more than just ordinary criminals. The sins of the Yakuza are mine. And if I have to, I'll take on every last one. If you can get through to him, his Yakuza history doesn't have to define him. Kiryu wants to repent for his lack of meaningful change with his time leading the Yakuza by being able to sway Ebina into turning them into a worthwhile organization. An organization worthy enough to redeem Kiryu's past and activity. If he can set free Ebina from his curse of hatred, he will feel free enough to enjoy the remainder of his life without this heavy burden. Kiryu will finally feel that he's done enough and he can rest easy as the legend he is.
guess you're just another sick pervert. But hey, your country's famous for weird shit. <laughs> like the anime porn or the panty machines, huh? 